this is part 2 in my CC5 series where I break down each lane including the different enemies, how risks will impact these enemies, as well as the different operators that can be used to overcome these challenges in a low to mid risk format, centered around risk 18 and risk 26 respectively. This video focuses on the left lane of the spectrum permanent map, remember to subscribe and like. As a pretext, anything in the mid risk tier can be applied to low risk as the lower risk focuses on more easily accessible options such as common borrow carries or low rarity operators. Whilst mid risk are mostly talking about high rarity operators with lower rarity sprinkled in as more of a curious option rather than a serious consideration. Let's begin with low risk. For the regular enemies on the left side such as the casters and the regular mobs they are a negligible threat as basically anything can take care of them. Casters do little damage and you can cycle your operators enough so that the damage is negligible and the mobs can be treated as if they are regular trash in a normal stage. For the night shielders in a lower rarity context you'll want to utilize arts dps that doesn't restrict your team too much due to class bands. If you're going to defend the caster route, a simple click would do fine. But since majority of players will attempt the guard medic route due to powerful higher rarity options such as Calstit, Surder or Thorns, the preferable way is to uh, kill it through Moose and or Arene. Podenka also works but it's a bit closer and may change depending on which risks you take. If you're borrowing a unit for the left side, Thorns and Kels are excellent at multitasking in both taking care of the night shooters as well as dealing pretty excellent damage towards the more pressing threats on that lane. However, it's generally not worth explicitly doing so as night shooters are more or less still a joke at this risk. At the end of the day, they're enemies with 8000 HP and 700 armor, so you should prioritize your resources on killing the Bladehelm casters as well as the Corrupted Knight as anything will still punch through them even with a couple of attack down risks. For the Blade Helm caster, if you're doing a pure low rarity team, it's actually advisable to leak it since it's hard to set up enough against them without sacrificing lineup power in other areas which may hurt your run overall. Picking to conserve the HP seal risks isn't a bad idea either as it enables you to leak another one of these pesky casters in the middle lane. However, in the context of say a Thorns Borrow, it's relatively easy to stall it long enough with bodies to where it dies, and if you have a higher rarity DPS like Ash, Soda, Calstead, etc., you should definitely attempt to burst it out, especially with the points mentioned above. Corrupted Knight Practically speaking, you wouldn't really want to do this, but there are a few ways to deal with him purely with low rarity for each of the class band routes. Guard Medic wise, this has a strat which spams stallers in order to form moves to rapidly DPS, but it's more specialized and I wouldn't recommend doing it. Similarly, there's also this clear for Caster Defender with Haze click and Shuriyuki to burst it down, but again, it's rather specialized. Coming in at approximately 38k HP and 1200 defense, a substantial portion of strong 6 star DPS can adequately deal with him without much trouble, and usually this overlaps with the other options available here. If you're unsure whether a specific unit can hold their own as potentially sole DPS against him, try using the Victor Labs calculator and see if total damage can cross that margin. Do keep in mind though that generally taking the risk for him being invisible is substantially easier than the risks which forced Bobro to appear earlier. I've linked the tool in the description and feel free to use it with Google Translate. Of course, the easiest answer is simply Soda, but I prefer to advocate more gameplay variants than to simply list out everything that works, especially at a risk level where everything is flexible. Overall, if you're looking to borrow a unit to carry this lane, the three recommendations are Soda, Thorns, or Calstead, all with their S3s. 
all of them can trivialize this segment and can free up resources for you to deal with the middle lane. Now we come to mid risk. Here's where it gets interesting, seeing as it's such a wide risk range, they can either be incredibly easy or mind numbingly hard, and it's also where most players stop at. For the regular enemies, they actually begin to be a real threat now, and ideally you want to cycle your DPS unit's burst skills to deal both with them and another major threat such as a shielder. In the beginning, Bagpipe is going to be your best bet, but Mountain or Saga also work reasonably well due to their low cost and ability to hold a lane for a decent duration, while Flag Bearers generate DP. Later on though, a transition to a longer ranged and consistent damage dealer is mostly what's recommended unless you're going for a cycle strat, with options such as Ash and Thorns being incredibly appealing as the former can burst down targets with S2 even when they are unstunned and Thorns has a very strong consistent range damage skill. Cow's dead but not possessing any range damage does make up for it with innate healing on monster, paired with very strong defense upon skill 3's activation. Besides that, there's also other miscellaneous options such as fast redeploys, using beanstalk, etc. Try them out for yourself and you might find an interesting and original strategy. Night Shielders Thorns and Ash still do work depending on which risks you take, but you definitely want an Elysium there for the defense debuff, especially when attack down is a pretty big killer and there's a DP down risk. Kalsted's S3 can be used almost solo due to its great uptime on S3 as well as monsters immense damage buff, and true damage just goes burr. Also works really well for the other random mobs due to the inheritance healing uh, provided by Cal, as well as relatively high defense on skill activation. In addition, true damage doesn't get fucked as much as physical damage from the attack debuff provided by Blade Helm casters, so that's another bonus for Cal. Schwartz S3 punches through the shielder's defense like butter, and again like Cal doesn't suffer too hard from the attack down Blade Helm caster debuff. She only takes one deployment slot however, but as a trade-off sacrifices her ability to do shit against the regular enemies requiring more support via power. Similarly, she's also there to contribute against the other elite enemies on that lane. Angelina is incredibly good here as well, but I'll save her for the high risk segment since she's like the only operator used there. Skill 2 though is the provided skill and there's a lot of viable placements for her even near the blue box. Back skills 3's burst DPS is pretty viable, but generally speaking, you'll need her for the beginning of the stage and she wouldn't be timed well for the shielder. But if you do need her excess damage for the blade helm casters, you should use her here. If going the caster defender route, an easy option that sacrifices basically nothing is to utilize Mudrock S3 to take very little damage from the night shielder while permanently holding the left side. And that works wonderfully for the shielder seeing as Mudrock is Mudrock and her shields are amazing. Those things have next to no resistance and casters shred through them like butter. What I said in the low risk context still applies here. Pick the risks you're going for and plug in your operator's data in the DPS calculator to have an idea of what they can or cannot do. These shooters are mainly a DPS check after all, unlike say the Blade Helm casters which provide an actual threat. Moving on to Blade Helm casters, well I can't exactly say to leak them now can I? An important thing that'll come up in mid to higher risks for these mobs is the mechanic of shift cancelling, which as the name implies cancels the wind up animation for a specific skill. In this case, BD's skill 2 and cannon are used to interrupt the attack debuff from the casters which, depending on strategy, is pretty paramount to make sure your other lanes don't get fucked, notably the crab one. And they are probably the enemies that you'll be spending most of your resources on on this map, alongside the corrupted knight. In essence though, I'd like to say that you can find your own combination of DPS that works, since there is room to pick and choose between 2 to 3 operators alongside Elysium. With no clear best option, and 12.8k HP, with meddling mitigation can be solved by a lot of units but do keep in mind with his double health phases and immense damage it will be a struggle. The following stuff I'll be recommended are mainly examples of what can be done as opposed to what you should carbon copy but feel free to play the game as you like.
Corrupted Knight. His invisibility essentially forces you to bring Elysium at this point, since stalling or using Surtur solo simply doesn't cut it. That also means you're incentivized to use physical operators, and the traditional ones like Schwartz, Silverash, Backpipe work phenomenally here. Of course, true damage is also extremely good if you happen to be using Cal in this lane, and there's such a vast combination of operators that work well here that I can't possibly list all of them, so have another look at a few possible examples of how it can be dealt with. Mid risk is a huge step up from low risk, but something like say risk 26 is miles harder than risk 24, so don't feel too daunted by this video. Even if you're a reward only player, I recommend trying out at least low 20s, and who knows, you might find a new aspect of Arknights which you enjoy. Thanks for watching again, subscribe if you enjoyed the video, and I'll link the relevant sources in the description.